Enola Gay. The Enola Gay is a Boeing B-29 Superfortress bomber, named after Enola Gay Tibbetts, the mother of the pilot, Colonel Paul Tibbetts. On August 6, 1945, during the final stages of World War II, it became the first aircraft to drop an atomic bomb. The bomb, codenamed Little Boy, was targeted at the city of Hiroshima, Japan, and caused the near-complete destruction of the city. Enola Gay participated in the second atomic attack as weather reconnaissance aircraft for the primary target of Kokura. Clouds and drifting smoke resulted in a secondary target, Nagasaki, being bombed instead. After the war, the Enola Gay returned to the United States, where it was operated from Roswell Army Airfield, New Mexico. In May 1946, it was flown to Kwajalein for the Operation Crossroads nuclear tests in the Pacific but was not chosen to make the test drop at Bikini Atoll. Later that year it was transferred to the Smithsonian Institution, and spent many years parked at air bases exposed to the weather and souvenir hunters, before being disassembled and transported to the Smithsonian Storage Facility at Suitland, Maryland, in 1961. In the 1980s, veterans groups engaged in a call for the Smithsonian to put the aircraft on display leading to an acrimonious debate about exhibiting the aircraft without a proper historical context. The cockpit and nose section of the aircraft were exhibited at the National Air and Space Museum, NASM, in downtown Washington, D.C., for the bombing's 50th anniversary in 1995, amid controversy. Since 2003, the entire restored B-29 has been on display at NASM's Stephen F. Udler Hazy Center. The last survivor of its crew, Theodore Van Kirk, died on July 28, 2014 at the age of 93. The Enola Gay, model number B2945 Mo, serial number 44 to 86292, Victor number 82, was built by the Glen L. Martin Company, later part of Lockheed Martin, at its Bellevue, Nebraska, plant, located at what is now known as Offutt Air Force Base. The bomber was one of the 15 initial examples of B-29s built to the silver plate specification. 65 of these eventually being completed during and after World War II, giving them the primary ability to function as nuclear weapon delivery aircraft. These modifications included an extensively modified bomb bay with pneumatic doors and British bomb attachment and release systems, reversible pitch propellers that gave more braking power on landing, improved engines with fuel injection and better cooling, and the removal of protective armor and gun turrets. Anola Gay was personally selected by Colonel Paul W. Tippetts, Jr the commander of the 509th Composite Group, on May 9, 1945, while still on the assembly line. The aircraft was accepted by the United States Army Air Forces on May 18, 1945 and assigned to the 393D Bombardment Squadron, Heavy, 509th Composite Group. Crew B-9, commanded by Captain Robert A. Lewis, took delivery of the bomber and flew it from Omaha to the 509th Spassit Wendover Army Airfield, Utah on June 14, 1945. Thirteen days later, the aircraft left Windover for Guam, where it received a bomb bay modification, and flew to Northfield, Tinian, on 6 July. It was initially given the Victor, squadron assigned identification, number 12, but on 1 August, was given the Circle R tail markings of the 6 Bombardment Group as a security measure and had its Victor number changed to 82 to avoid misidentification with actual 6th Bombardment Group aircraft. During July, the bomber made eight practice or training flights, and flew two missions, on 24 and 26 July, to drop pumpkin bombs on industrial targets at Kobe and Nagoya. Enola Gay was used on 31 July on a rehearsal flight for the actual mission. The partially assembled Little Boy gun-type fission weapon L-11, weighing, was contained inside a times times wooden crate that was secured to the deck of the, unlike the six uranium-235 target discs, which were later flown to Tinian on three separate aircraft arriving 28 and 29th of July. The assembled projectile with thenian uranium-235 rings installed was shipped in a single lead-lined steel container weighing that was locked to brackets welded to the deck of Captain Charles P. McVeigh 3 S quarters. Both the L-11 and projectile were dropped off at Tinian on July 26, 1945. On August 5, 1945, during preparation for the first atomic mission, Tibbetts assumed command of the aircraft and named it after his mother, Anola Gay Tibbetts, who, in turn, had been named for the heroine of the novel. When it came to selecting a name for the plane, Tibbetts later recalled that,
The name was painted on the aircraft on 5th of August by Alan L. Carl, an enlisted man in the 509th. Regularly assigned aircraft commander Robert Lewis was unhappy to be displaced by Tippets for this important mission, and became furious when he arrived at the aircraft on the morning of 6th of August to see it painted with the now famous nose art. Hiroshima was the primary target of the first nuclear bombing mission on 6th of August, with Kokura and Nagasaki as alternative targets. Anola Gay, piloted by Tibbets, took off from Northfield, in the northern Mariana Islands, about six hours flight time from Japan, accompanied by two other B-29s, the Great Artiste, carrying instrumentation, and a then nameless aircraft later called Necessary Evil, commanded by Captain George Marquardt, to take photographs. The director of the Manhattan Project, Major General Leslie R. Groves, Jr., wanted the event recorded for posterity, so the takeoff was illuminated by floodlights. When he wanted to taxi, Tibbets leaned out the window to direct the bystanders out of the way. On request, he gave a friendly wave for the cameras. After leaving Tinian, the aircraft made their way separately to Iwo Jima, where they rendezvoused at and set course for Japan. The aircraft arrived over the target in clear visibility at Captain William S. Deke Parsons of Project Alberta, who was in command of the mission, armed the bomb during the flight to minimize the risks during takeoff. His assistant, 2nd Lieutenant Morris R. Jepson, removed the safety devices 30 minutes before reaching the target area. The release at 8.15, Hiroshima time, went as planned, and the little boy took 43 seconds to fall from the aircraft flying it to the predetermined detonation height about above the city. Anola Gate traveled before it felt the shock waves from the blast. Although buffeted by the shock, neither Anola Gay nor the great artiste was damaged. The detonation created a blast equivalent to the U-235 weapon was considered very inefficient, with only 1.7% of its fissile material reacting. The radius of total destruction was about 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers, with resulting fires across. Americans estimated that if the city were destroyed. Japanese officials determined that 69% of Hiroshima's buildings were destroyed and another 6 to 7% damaged. Some 70,000 to 80,000 people, 30% of the city's population, were killed by the blast and resultant firestorm, and another 70,000 injured. Out of those killed, 20,000 were soldiers. Anola Gay returned safely to its base on Tinian to great fanfare, touching down at 2.58 p.m., after 12 hours 13 minutes. The great artiste and necessary evil followed at short intervals. Several hundred people, including journalists and photographers, had gathered to watch the plane's return. Tibbets was the first to disembark, and was presented with the Distinguished Service Cross on the spot. The Hiroshima mission was followed by another atomic strike. Originally scheduled for 11th of August, it was brought forward by two days to 9th of August owing to a forecast of bad weather. This time, a fat man nuclear weapon was carried by B-29 boxcar, piloted by Major Charles W. Sweeney. Anola Gay, flown by Captain George Marquardt's crew B-10 was the weather reconnaissance aircraft for Kokora, the primary target. Anola Gay reported clear skies over Kokora, but by the time Boxcar arrived, the city was obscured by smoke from fires from the conventional bombing off Yahata by 224 B-29s the day before. After three unsuccessful passes, Boxcar diverted to its secondary target, Nagasaki, where it dropped its bomb. In contrast to the Hiroshima mission, the Nagasaki mission has been described as tactically botched. Although the mission did meet its objectives, the crew encountered a number of problems in execution, and had very little fuel by the time they landed at the emergency backup landing site Yontan Airfield in Okinawa. Anola Gay's crew on August 6, 1945, consisted of 12 men. The crew was of Mission Commander Parsons, it was said, there is no one more responsible for getting this bomb out of the laboratory and into some form useful for combat operations than Captain Parsons by his plain genius in the ordnance business. For the Nagasaki mission, Anola Gay was flown by crew B-10, normally assigned to up and Adam. On November 6, 1945, Lewis flew the Anola Gay back to the United States, arriving at the 509th new base at Roswell Army Airfield, New Mexico, on 8 November. On April 29, 1946, Anola Gay left Roswell as part of the Operation Crossroads nuclear weapons tests in the Pacific. It flew to Kwajalein Atoll on 1 May. It was not chosen to make the test drop at Bikini Atoll and left Kwajalein on 1 July, the date of the test, reaching Fairfield Sassoon Army Airfield, California, 
the next day. The decision was made to preserve the Enola Gay, and on July 24, 1946, the aircraft was flown to Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Tucson, Arizona, in preparation for storage. On August 30, 1946, the title to the aircraft was transferred to the Smithsonian Institution and the Enola Gay was removed from the USAF inventory. From 1946 to 1961, the Enola Gay was put into temporary storage at a number of locations. It was at Davis Monthan from September 1, 1946 until July 3, 1949, when it was flown to Orchard Place Airfield, Park Ridge, Illinois, by Tibbetts for acceptance by the Smithsonian. It was moved to Piot Air Force Base, Texas, on January 12, 1952, and then to Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland, on December 2, 1953, because the Smithsonian had no storage space for the aircraft. It was hoped that the Air Force would guard the plane, but, lacking hangar space, it was left outdoors on a remote part of the airbase, exposed to the elements. Souvenir hunters broke in and removed parts. Insects and birds then gained access to the aircraft. Polly Garber of the Smithsonian Institution became concerned about the Enola Gay's condition, and on August 10, 1960, Smithsonian staff began dismantling the aircraft. The components were transported to the Smithsonian Storage Facility at Suitland, Maryland, on July 21, 1961. Anola Gay remained at Suitland for many years. By the early 1980s, two veterans of the 509th, Don Earl and his former navigator in the 509th, Frank B. Stewart, began lobbying for the aircraft to be restored and put on display. They enlisted Tippetts and Senator Barry Goldwater in their campaign. In 1983, Walter J. Boyne, a former B 52 pilot with the Strategic Air Command, became director of the National Air and Space Museum, and he made the Enola Gay S restoration a priority. Looking at the aircraft, Tibbetts recalled, was a sad meeting. My fond memories, and I don't mean the dropping of the bomb, were the numerous occasions I flew the airplane, I pushed it very, very hard and it never failed me. It was probably the most beautiful piece of machinery that any pilot ever flew. Restoration of the bomber began on December 5, 1984, at the Paul E. Garber Preservation, Restoration, and Storage Facility in Suitland Silver Hill, Maryland. The propellers that were used on the bombing mission were later shipped to Texas A&M University. One of these propellers was trimmed to for use in the university's Orrin W. Nix low-speed wind tunnel. The lightweight aluminum variable pitch propeller is powered by a 1,250 kV electric motor, providing a wind speed up to. Two engines were rebuilt at Garber and two at San Diego Air and Space Museum. Some parts and instruments had been removed and could not be located. Replacements were found or fabricated, and marked so that future curators could distinguish them from the original components. Anola Gay became the center of a controversy at the Smithsonian Institution when the museum planned to put its fuselage on public display in 1995 as part of an exhibit commemorating the 50th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. The exhibit, The Crossroads, The End of World War II, The Atomic Bomb and the Cold War, was drafted by the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum staff, and arranged around the restored Anola Gay. Critics of the planned exhibit, especially those of the American Legion and the Air Force Association, charged that the exhibit focused too much attention once Japanese casualties inflicted by the nuclear bomb, rather than on the motivations for the bombing or the discussion of the bomb's role in ending the conflict with Japan. The exhibit brought to national attention many long-standing academic and political issues related to retrospective views of the bombings. As a result, after various failed attempts to revise the exhibit in order to meet the satisfaction of competing interest groups, the exhibit was cancelled on 30 January 1995. Martin O. Harwit, director of the National Air and Space Museum, was compelled to resign over the controversy. He later reflected that the forward fuselage went on display on June 28, 1995. On July 2, 1995, three people were arrested for throwing ash and human blood on the aircraft's fuselage following an earlier incident in which a protester had thrown red paint over the gallery's carpeting. The exhibition closed on May 18, 1998, and the fuselage was returned to the Garber facility for final restoration. Restoration work began in 1984, and would eventually require 300,000 staff hours. While the fuselage was on display, from 1995 to 1998, work continued on the remaining unrestored components. The aircraft was shipped in pieces to the National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia from March to June 2003, 
with the fuselage and wings reunited for the first time since 1960 on April 10, 2003 and assembly completed on August 8, 2003. The aircraft has been on display at the Udvarhazy Center since the museum annex opened on December 15, 2003. As a result of the earlier controversy, the signage around the aircraft provided only the same succinct technical data as is provided for other aircraft in the museum, without discussion of the controversial issues. It read, The display of the Enola Gay without reference to the historical context of World War II, the Cold War, or the development and deployment of nuclear weapons aroused controversy. A petition from a group calling themselves the Committee for a National Discussion of Nuclear History and Current Policy bemoaned the display of Enola Gay as a technological achievement which it described as an extraordinary callousness toward the victims, indifference to the deep divisions among American citizens about the propriety of these actions, and disregard for the feelings of most of the world's peoples. It attracted signatures from notable figures including historian Gar Alperovitz, social critic Noam Chomsky, whistleblower Daniel Ellsberg, physicist Joseph Rothblatt, writer Kurt Vonnegut, producer Norman Lear, actor Martin Sheen and filmmaker Oliver Stone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.